Hi, I'm your host, Megalon Jones, and welcome back to the sharp end of the stick. In particular, welcome to the modern era of laser range finders, targeting computers. We are in the blazing hot sun of Syria in alternate history, 2008, where NATO is forcibly evicting the Assad regime of its place of power. Over the last couple days, bad weather has hampered NATO's reconnaissance, and they've lost track of a fairly large and very powerful Syrian force, which is now about to smash into our British Tommies. The only thing stopping them from tearing up NATO's supply routes is a single mechanized infantry company. The terrain is mostly flat with some hills that I've notated. It is very hot. Now in the yellow, you'll see X-ray, Yankee, and Zebra. These are hills that I expect the Syrians to take advantage of because they offer uh, blocking of the line of sight. You'll also see uh, where I'm putting my platoons in reverse slope. The entire point of this, I've been told that we have uh, mechanized infantry and tanks on the way. So I'm not going to uh, position really very much into fighting positions until I can zap their armor that's expected. So that means putting forward the uh, observers to take care of the artillery and the air power that have been uh, chopped off to me as well as the javelin teams. So it's late in the afternoon and our forces are moving forward to their initial staging area. Like I said, we're only going to have the javelins and the forward observers out front at first. The javelins have been given uh, very tight targeting orders. The match begins with a pre-planned barrage up against the one uh, fortified position I've got, which happens to be uh, a former mansion of a Syrian playboy. And I do not have that manned right now, as it seems like the only place that they could use their pre-planned artillery on, and sure enough, they did. British forces don't have as much anti-tank firepower as their American counterparts. They have uh, fewer javelins per company. So these guys have got to be used very wisely and very sparingly, presumably against tanks, if and when they show up. And right on cue, the Syrians show up at Zebra. And that's really bad news because that T-72 is a modernized edition. It has... Uh, uh, modern targeting computer, thermal optics, and the first thing they do is zap a warrior uh, AFV that I neglected to hide properly. They're backed up by BMP2s. Now the appearance of both of these tell me that this is a uh, Class A type division. With the appearance of the tanks, I let loose the first volleys of the javelins. It's really important to get these guys quick because the Soviet bloc stuff is made to move fast. This shot will give you an idea how long it takes uh, for a javelin team to acquire targets, lock on, and let loose the missile. Now, once it's gone, it's fire and forget, but up until that point, they're more or less hanging out with their business out in the, uh, in the breeze. On the left, a whole horde of Syrian dismounted infantry comes across uh, over top 
the X-ray here. Since I really don't have anything forward to deal with, the plan is to send the leftmost platoons, armored fighting vehicles in a shoot and scoot order to try to zap the stuff coming out on my left hand side. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to be doing uh, targets of opportunity against uh, T-72s that I see. The javelins are still on a really tight orders. Basically, they're not going to shoot until I tell them to shoot at something in particular. And so goes with the shoot and scoot. This was always going to be a bit of a risk. The Syrians have a lot more ATGMs. They've got tanks. And those ATGMs are on the BMP-2s. Uh, their first order of business is to try to zap those, but they do, the Syrians do manage to get off a couple of saggers at us. One goes wild and smashes in front of a pool of observers, scaring the daylights out of them. But another zaps uh, a warrior AFV, so there's two warriors down. And at the same time, I'm trying to maneuver the javelins to get better shots at the incoming armor. This isn't very easy on them, and I'm starting to take casualties. I haven't decided if that's really a fair trade. I mean, I still had two more javelins left with that crew that got crushed. The Syrian dismounts are about halfway through the map, and it's at around this point when I notice that I've got an excellent flanking fire running from my right to my left. And these guys are basically firing defilade, and they are protected. So as that plays out, I'm trying to move the forward observers to get the artillery into a blocking position. And now we're going to see the warriors start to do their business. This next sequence is pretty astounding.
the BMP zapped, I can now move my warriors into actual fighting positions. These guys are going to be in place to stay. The only way I can get away with that is because I've just received reinforcements. A platoon of Challenger tanks have arrived, and they start to do their thing against the Syrians. Fire control on the challengers along with the uh, training in the crew begins to really take hold on the situation. At the same time, I've got a pair of GR9 Harriers attacking uh, Syrian targets behind the bridge lines at X ray, Yankee, and Zebra. The remaining Syrian armor is taken care of. It just begins a turkey shoot with uh, dismounted infantry tanks and infantry fighting vehicles spending the next five minutes raking the enemy with fire. Surprisingly, I end up with a total victory. Um, I think I took around a little over a dozen KIAs along with some wounded. Uh, the vast majority of those were in the warriors that got shellacked. Um, really, basically, I think this mission came down to with knowing uh, what the tools you had at your disposal how to best use them and to not get too um, uh, trigger happy with the javelins because I very well could have just uh, had them fire 
as the AI would have suggested, and they probably would have fired at a number of BMPs, which could be taken out by something else, na uh, namely my own warrior IFVs. Um, overall, I really like this game. I purchased the original version of Shock Force a long time ago and was less than impressed with it. Um, there, I'm not going to go into too many details. But uh, the new and improved Shock Force 2 is fantastic. It really offers a lot of different content. And uh, with the, with the uh, version 2.02 uh, game engine of Combat Mission, the game is really outstanding. And I would advise everyone to open up their wallets and go buy this. Um, really, this was an exercise in fire discipline and not getting too rattled by a lot of stuff coming at you which um, kind of is a function of uh, NATO in general as it was geared towards fighting uh, theoretical World War III in Germany and it would have looked something like this albeit I guarantee you the Red Army has probably a bit more discipline uh, and assets to throw at me. Well, I really enjoyed this, and I hope you stick around for the next one. Mankind has conquered the stars. He moves out to the endless interstellar reaches of the universe. An advanced exploration corps, a new breed of pioneer must seek out unstable planets and destroy them. The drive sequence begun. Hit it, pin back. mission of the 21st century planet smashers dark star 20 years in space 1 million light years from earth their job is to clear a path for the colonization of space back home back home in malibu i used to surf a lot talby i used to be a great surfer travel in an infinite universe with mind melting excitement from beyond the stars Bomb number 20. Return to the bomb bay immediately. But I have received the operational signal. Hello, Bob? Are you with me? I wish I had more time. Why don't you have more time? Because I must detonate. Commander Powell, this is Doolittle. Can you hear me? Man, man, what happened, man? Hey, Bob. Cooper! Power drive sequence attack, man. Roger retracted. Lock all defensive systems. Dark Star. They're not lost in space. They're loose. <laughs> <laughs>